Hello there, my name is Anthony Barocas for YOLO Live. And one of the things we really love about the YOLO Box is the continued refinements and updates. And today I have an exciting suite of updates in the YOLO Box Pro 5.0 update. YOLO Box users on the forums have been asking for a lot of little tweaks, a little additions, a little things, and YOLO Live is listening. Today, we are going to be talking about the 5.0 update with first network bonding optimization. That means things are going to be working smoother, even better than before. Replays can be saved. This is something that people have been asking for a lot, especially if you do sports. You do a replay of a big goal, a fantastic play, you want to save it. Now all of those replays will be saved on the media for you to use however you want after the event. Next up, adding images as a source, 10 static images or GIFs with auto switching. This is going to be huge. Using images as Standalone inputs has not been possible before, and even better, you can have up to 10 of them and they will automatically switch between the inputs. We'll get into that in a minute. Next up, PDF source optimization, including auto switching. Did you want those PDFs to move forward by themselves? Now it works. Some people have reported a noise issue during long time YouTube streaming. They've gone through, they fixed that. Audio follows video. This is one I know I have always been asking for. The default setting is now turned off and we'll show you what that means. Wi-Fi support for opening a web page login. If you've been at a hotel and you try to sign into the Wi-Fi and it's going to try to throw open a web page, now you can do all that on the YOLO box. They've added an expiration reminder about Facebook account binding. And they've had to do this because Facebook changes their protocols all the time. So anytime Facebook changes something, you have to go through and disconnect and reconnect. Well, now they're making it even more evident so that it avoids other problems. It avoids you trying to do a show and then having a Facebook issue, but it's Facebook that's having the problem, not the tools in your hand. The name overlay in lower thirds now supports movement in all directions. People have been asking for this and YOLO Live made it happen. And lastly, Wi-Fi support for displaying 2.4 and 5 gigahertz. More information is always better and we'll show you what that means. So we've got a lot going on in this update. Seemingly small things, but they really do add up. First things first, the network bonding optimization. If you don't already know, network bonding is where you can use multiple connections to the internet together as one big pipe so that if your cellular connection tends to go down, it can lean on your ethernet connection. If your ethernet connection gets cut, it can lean on the cellular connection and you're not cut off. The bonding settings are now part of the YOLO cast service. The reason there is a price is because as I've explained before, the bonding that's happening here where it's taking this video stream, numbering the packets and sending them out on different paths via cellular or Wi-Fi and Ethernet and another cellular connection. It's sending these things out. They're not going to arrive in order at the receiving end. YOLO Live has to set up a server, computers, mini computers to receive all these packets from everybody who's streaming, put them back in the proper order and then send them off to YouTube or wherever else you wanted them to go. That computer costs money. That server costs money. The maintenance, the power, the cooling, all of that costs money. And there are costs associated with that. So here you can see right here, if you're going to be on an annual plan, or if you just wanted to activate it for that important event where you're going to be in a place where you know you're not going to have great internet service. Now, what that really means is it gives you time to do rehearsals, trial runs, tests, and the actual show. So don't just look at it as a single day event. You really need to make sure, as I've always said, test, test, test. And this gives you time to do those tests and make sure that all of those different connections you're trying to test actually work. For an event, for a client, you can sit there and say, bonding for this event is $29 makes it easy to write it off on the line. They could choose to have bonding or they could choose not to have bonding. And if they choose not to, you have to explain to them to risks. If your internet connection goes down, if you're trying to use cellular at an outdoor event and 10,000 people show up, there's not gonna be a whole lot of bandwidth at that one tower. So bonding is critical. And $29 to make sure that you've got a signal to get through is worth it. 
the replay can be saved as an MP4. This is something that a lot of people have been asking for. I've got some sports playing on my Yolo Box Pro. Now this could be live. Um, what you would normally do is you'd have the camera doing the live. I have a recording just because I'm not on a field and I can't have a bunch of people playing soccer on demand. So <laughs> I'm gonna be using video to demonstrate this. Before you start doing your instant replay, which is available right there on that button, don't click it until you come over here to your settings at the very bottom, replay settings. You wanna dive into here. First, your replay video duration. 59 seconds, that's a whole minute. I don't need a replay that is a whole minute long. I am gonna bring that down. I, When I was playing with this before, I found like seven seconds seem to be like a good replay length. So first thing you're doing, doing is you're gonna set that replay duration right there. Next, your replay speed. 0.75 was added. Again, that's another user request that was put right into the product. You can go faster. Most people don't want faster, but I find that 0.75 speed is a good speed. It shows slow motion. It lets people you know, really enjoy the moment, but it's not too slow that it seems to take forever to happen. And then your replay audio. I generally have the replay audio off because while the replay is going, my main microphone's still going, so you can still talk over it. They can still have the live audio. And also, when you slow the video down, you're, you're gonna get slowed down audio that's gonna be kinda glitchy. Generally, that's not the best to listen to, so I prefer to have it off, but again, that's available to for you to make your decision whether you want it on or off. Come down here. Mute other or other audio sources during replay. Again, I have that off because I wanna have my mic still working, but you can turn the replay audio on and then the main audio off, your decision. And then show replay overlay on the program. So it's gonna put like the little word replay on the screen. It's not super in your face, it's kinda of subtle. So especially like in this footage, I find with all the trees and everything in the background, it can be kinda of hard to see. It depends on the footage you have, it depends on the sport you have or whatever you're putting the replay over top of, how visible that's going to be. So I leave that on. Make sure you go through these settings before you start doing instant replay or you know, if it defaults to a minute on, you're gonna be caught with quite a surprise when you try to do that first replay. <laughs> so let's go back over here and we'll come back in there. So let's just say we would have our, you know, we would be in the scoreboard thing. And this is the cool thing about the instant replay is that it's not taking up the right pane. You still have this scoreboard available that you could be adjusting your scoreboard while the you're watching the sports. Let's go to sports. While the sport is going on and your replay is up there. Now we're going to start a record because it works when you're recording or streaming. I mean, doesn't make sense to have a replay if you're not recording or streaming because there's nobody watching that. So I've got a recording going on. Something's happening here. Let's just watch this a little bit. And oh, he's hurt. Look at that. And here, come, here they all come over and we're going to hit replay. And then it's going to come back over here. You can see this. there's a very faint replay up here in the corner. And then it's come over here. And then it's going to jump right back into that. So that is cool. That is how you do your replay. It is simple. One touch, here it comes, here it comes. Is it gonna go out? Is it gonna go in? Let's wa let's follow this game a little bit. Kicking it in, kicking it in. Man, I gotta go back and forth and it goes out. Oh no, we're gonna hit replay again. So you can see it, it comes over to him, he kicks it over and who kicked it out? He kicked it out and nobody touched it. Okay, that's, and we're gonna exit the replay. And again, that's a key thing too. You can hit exit the replay at any time by tapping the exit replay. You don't have to wait for the whole thing to happen. All right, so here we go, here we go. He's running, he's running, and the goalie gets it. So let's do a replay of that. Here we go. Replay, 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 replay. He catches the ball. And you can see it's down here. It's playing the replay clip. And then it's going to exit the replay, go back to the local video. Now, Let's go back to me. The key thing that it was doing is, is it's saving these things. So if I go into add video source and I say local video, you see all these replays are now stored as clips. So if after the event or during halftime, you wanted to show some of these clips, you just need to know like the date, the time that that happened. But 
it allows those clips to all be available. And especially if you're going to do a highlights reel after the event and upload it later, you're going to have every single one of those replays available as a separate clip on your Yolo box. You don't have to do anything. Just hitting the replay button, stored that on the internal, I was going to say hard drive, stored it on your memory for you to be able to have later without having to go through the main recording and pull those clips out. You've already pulled them out when you hit the replay button. Now they're all available for you to use after the event. Next up, adding images as video sources. 10 static images or GIFs. Animated GIFs work as backgrounds too with auto switching. Let's look at that. So right here, you can see I've got my pro set up right in front of me and I'm going to add a video source right here. And then down here, there's images. Before it was just video, live stream, PDF. Now there's this images icon. We're going to click on images and then it's going to go right to your media, SD card or USB storage. You could still choose. We're going to choose uh, this background, this background, this background. These are all animated GIFs. So you're going to get to see that. And then we can use a background with that. And we're going to use a office background and then this cool background. I'm going to say done. Now you can see they're already playing. I can just go right to it and there it is. I've got this image that is playing. You can see it says one of six. I can go next, next, back, back. I can move through them manually. I can go back. I can go back to the beginning. So that is handy, but there are settings for this as well. And you can, if you look really close, there's two icons here. The first icon on the right is the one you know already where you can do chroma keying and cropping just like any other video source. So if you bring in an image, but you only want to use part of it, you can do that. Moreover, let's go back out. There's the second icon right here. We're going to click on that. And that is specifically for auto switching your images. So you can turn on auto switch. You can look at these images. Also, it allows you to jump to any particular input directly. So I can go right to this background and you can see it changing in the background here. I can go right to this one. I can go back to that one. So that is really cool. Manually picking what that input is directly. So let's look at the output of my say done here and let's look at the output of my switcher. And we'll put that on the right here. So here is that. And when I bring up that source, I can then pick this one and that one and this one. And I'm going out of order, that one and this one. So it lets me jump around and pick any of those things in any order, which another feature that people have been asking for. Now you can do it with these image backgrounds. Auto switch. When I turn this on, it says it's going to automatically switch to the next successive one every 10 seconds. And if you tap on that, of course, you can adjust it from 10 seconds to 59 minutes. That's an hour. So I don't know if you're going to have a show that you need something changed every hour, but you can do it. <laughs> but right now we get it set for every 10 seconds. We say done. We say done. And then I put myself right next to this. And as you can see in just a few seconds, it's going to automatically switch. So I really don't have to worry about it because it is automatically switching. I didn't touch it. It just switches. These are fantastic features that are now built in to the Yolo Box Pro. Next up, PDF source optimization, including auto switching. Let's take a look at that. Here's my Pro. I'm going to add a video source and there's my PDF. We're going to click on PDF. I've got a PDF on my stick here. We're going to say load that. Done. And now there's my PDF. So let me go into the settings. You see, again, we've got the normal cropping and chroma keying, which I don't necessarily want to do with a PDF. But let's go into these settings over here and you can see I've got two pages and I can turn it on auto switching between the pages. How fast? So if someone gives you a PDF with a presentation or some marketing media or something like that, you can load that in here, auto switch, go, you're done. It happens automatically and you don't have to worry about it. So you can see how Yola Live is making the Yola Box Pro even easier to use and making it even easier for you to for your live streams.
We talked about fixing the audio noise, but here's the audio follows video. The default setting is turned off. What that means is when you're doing a show with multiple video inputs, you want to keep your audio on the source that's giving you the audio. For me, I like to run my audio into the main camera, or you could be running it into the line input or the microphone input of your Yolo box. What you want to do is I'm going to come over here and go to my audio mixer. So you can see audio follows video is now off. Whatever I pick, HDMI 2, HDMI 1, I don't have to worry about it changing on me because the audio follows video is going to default to off. There are times you are going to want that on. For example, if you're doing remote guests, you don't want all of their audio coming on all the time. You just want it when they're on camera when they're invisible in the video. So you're going to turn it on for those cases. And then that way, if I switch you and you watch what happens here, when I switch to this input, it automatically switches the audio. When I switch back, it switches it back. But as you can see up here, I have my main audio coming into this camera. If I have audio follows video on and I switch the other input, there's nothing there. There's no audio there. So it's very important that you understand what that is and when it is appropriate to turn it on. Next up, the Wi-Fi support for opening a web page login. I've talked about that. I can't demonstrate it because I'm not in a hotel. We added an expression reminder for the Facebook. Talked about that. Name overlay in lower thirds now supports movement in all directions. People have asked for this because it has been stuck to the side. Not anymore. So here we go. We're going to add a lower third. We're going to do this one. And now, as you can see, I can move this anywhere. People have been asking for this, and now it's possible. This is just another example of how the YOLO Live team listen to end users. They go back into engineering. They dig into these things. I mean, basically, they had to rip this entire titling thing apart and rebuild it so that you can now say, oh, I want it up here in the corner. No, I want it down here. I want it over here. I want it down here just as simple as that. And of course, just like always, you can scale it. You can determine how these two pieces look together. The subtitle size, you come up here, the title size, all these things are adjustable. The colors are changeable. The fonts are changeable. This way, your titles aren't going to look like everybody else's. And that's one of the great things about this tiny little tool that really helps you differentiate your stream from everybody else's. And lastly, the Wi-Fi support for displaying 2.4 or 5 gigahertz. This seems like a small thing, but it really does help when you're trying to troubleshoot things. Let me show you what I mean. You come over here, you go to your network settings, and go to your Wi-Fi, and you can see now over here, it's showing you this uh, Alula is only available in 2.4. Reetland is available in 2.4 and 5. The office where I'm working in, it's pulling in on 5 gigahertz. So it really does give you more information. As you can see, if I click on the gear icon, it's not like I can come in here and I can change the frequency. It is not a choice. And I know that the access point does offer both 2.4 and 5, but it is connected on 5, and I don't have the ability to come in here and change it. But it's just knowing what the device is doing helps you better deal with trouble because 5 gigahertz is a smaller wave, meaning it's able to deliver more data faster, which means that's what you want to use if you're kind of in the same room, but it's not going to reach as far, not through walls, not outside. You want 2.4, which may be a little slower, but it's more robust in terms of reaching out a long distance. For those access points that offer 2.4 and 5 gigahertz available separately, You'll see them listed here separately, and then you can make a deliberate choice whether, based on distance, you need to use the 2.4 for more robust signal, or because of speed, you need to use the 5 gigahertz and you're close in the same room. Then you can pick the 5 gigahertz. It lets you make that choice. As you can see, this update for the Yolo Box Pro has added a lot of very useful features that end users like you and me are going to be able to make use of starting from their very next show. Yola Live has been listening and making these features that are built into these little tools more useful than ever before. My name is Anthony Barocas for Yola Live. Thanks for watching.